Okay, today's topic in economics is the real interest rate. So suppose you want to buy a car, and the car costs $12,000, and you have $10,000, but you can put it in the bank and earn 20% interest. So <coughs> you put it in the bank and one year from now, uh, so one year later you have $12,000. So that's one year later. But then, whoopsies, the car now costs $11,000. So, or sorry, it costs, not 11, cost 13,200. That is, it's gone up by 10%. So the car co now costs 13,200, and you're, um, you only have 12,000, so you can't buy the car. So what happened is that you didn't <coughs> factor in inflation in thinking about what the real rate of interest would be. And so, we factor in inflation by saying that the real rate of interest is approximately equal to the nominal rate, which is the rate that's, your, that's quoted, the 20%, minus the rate of inflation. So that's what you really earned. You didn't earn 20% really. You earned 20% minus the 10% um, appreciation. So you more or less, you, 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 you got your 20% from the bank, but then you lost your 10% from inflation, and so you only got 10% in what's called real terms, the real interest rate. Um, so... What you want to do, so next time you wouldn't be fooled like that, and <coughs> I'm going to put, the <coughs> put this equation in symbols. R would be the real interest rate. I will be the nominal interest rate. And since you're not going to be fooled next time, next time you're going to try to, to anticipate how much inflation there's going to be. And we call that pi E. Pi for inflation, E for expectations. So this is expected, that's where the E comes from, inflation. So this real interest rate matters when you're saving for something or when you're borrowing. Because uh, if you borrow and there's a lot, it turns out there's going to be a lot, a lot of inflation, then uh, in some sense it's cheaper to borrow. You'll be paying back in cheaper dollars. The asset that you buy will have appreciated. <coughs> so, um, so you'll focus on this real interest rate. And I want to put that in our loanable funds diagram. So we have loanable funds. And so what we should have on this axis is I minus P, pi E, so the, or the real interest rate. So we're now focused on the real interest rate. So I minus pi E and R are the same thing. And we have a demand for loanable funds and a supply of loanable funds. <coughs> so if... So if you're supplying loanable funds, if you're thinking of putting money into a savings account, you ca like somebody who's saving for a car, you're going to look for a real return, the difference between the nominal interest rate and expected inflation. And if you're demanding loanable funds, if you're going to borrow money to buy a house or your business, you're going to borrow money to buy equipment, again, you're going to be looking at <coughs> the real interest rate. And if the real interest rate is spectacularly low or negative, which it can conceivably be, you're going to really have a big buy now pay, uh, attitude and you're not going to want to save much. So the, with a low real interest rate, the desire for savings would be low. 
the demand for savings would be high. Of course, if we're in a reasonable market, the um, the real interest rate will be kept at a high level, at, at, a, at a level that's closer to here than something closer to zero or negative. Okay, now we can talk about how the putting the inter putting the money market diagram and the loanable funds diagram side by side. Here was the loanable funds, here was the money market, and claiming that there's the same interest rate is a swindle. Okay, it's a swindle to say that this interest rate and this interest rate is the same because in the money market diagram it's still the nominal interest rate. So you have <coughs> money supply and you have money demand but money demand depends on the nominal interest rate. Why? Because uh, the amount by which uh, your currency loses value relative to other things is the um, nominal interest rate. So um, if it is, uh, it is a big waste for me to keep a lot of cash in the drawer uh, at home if the nominal interest rate is 20 percent and I could be earning 20 percent and that's true whether inflation expectations are 15 percent or zero. It doesn't matter about inflation expectations. Keeping <coughs> cash in the drawer is a big waste if the nominal interest rate is high. So uh, what we ought to be doing is not having the same interest rate but if we go across, in some sense, the difference between here and here should be inflation expectations. So here we have the real interest rate, and then we go up by the amount of inflation expect expected inflation to get to the nominal interest rate. And that should be the real relationship between the loanable funds diagram and the money market diagram. Finally, just as a matter of historical interest, the relationship that R equals I minus pi E, that is the real interest rate equals the nominal interest rate minus expected inflation, is known as the Fisher equation. And that's for Irving Fisher, uh, who was uh, an economist in the early part of the 20th century. One of the leading economists within the profession, rather notorious outside of the profession because he made uh, very public optimistic statements about the stock market right before the crash of 29. So his reputation in the public was uh, pretty much trashed, but he, is, he remains uh, someone who's considered one of the great economists of the early 20th century. So that's the real interest rate, <coughs> and I'll see you next time.